Sunlight trickles in mottled, sporadic patterns through the forest canopy. Breaking through evergreen trees and towering bamboo to cast an early morning light on the undergrowth. The sun is beginning to rise on another warm morning in the late Pleistocene epoch of southern China, two million years prior to today. Gentle streams trickle through breaks in the greenery, and the dawn chorus of birds can be heard piercing the morning air. It is a lush paradise, perfect for life to bloom in all sorts of new shapes and sizes. A pleasant break from the blistering winds of the Ice Age closing in on Europe and Northern Asia, a couple of thousand miles north. A small herd of hooved mammals, possibly deer, break through the pillars of bamboo to browse on the vegetation lining this tranquil scene. But they must be careful. Tigers are native to the region in much greater numbers than they can be found in today. Cautiously, one of the little mammals raises its head to check for danger before settling down to drink. It is safe. Peace is often fleeting in the natural world, however, and shortly after they begin their morning drink, they find themselves bolting back to the undergrowth to safety. A flock of birds has disturbed them from their morning gathering, sent soaring into the warm morning air by something huge moving through the undergrowth. Like something from a Hollywood film, the bushes across the stream rattle and rustle progressively faster until a tall black shadow can be seen emerging from the tangle of bamboo and leaves. It's a primate, a colossal, reddish-colored, muscular, powerful primate. As its face steadily unsheathes itself from the greenery, it looks almost human. A kind, slow expression spreads across its huge cheeks as it too pauses to check for tigers. With none in sight, the primate Gigantopithecus, a huge extinct ape, can descend to the stream to drink. As a lone adult male, this is his territory, and he will spend the morning coursing it for food and water. Although the terrified hoofed mammals are long gone, they needn't have worried. Gigantopithecus is a strict vegetarian and would have, at best, just ushered them along so he could have drank in peace. Instead, this giant ape stands tall and proud in his forest home. He is one of the most remarkable animals living in these forests, and there is little that can do him harm. Pushing through a lofty bamboo thicket, he finds himself in a densely surrounded forest clearing, surrounded by others of his kind, his family, several females, a few young males, and some youngsters born just last year are at his command. As the leader of his troop, he will defend them from rival males and predators fiercely, siring as many of his family's children as he can within the constraints of his reign. He and his kind are the largest primates ever to live. Around two million years ago, a certain genus of ape began to appear in the subtropical forests of southern China. Powerful, muscular, and intelligent, it boasted the trademark traits of many contemporary apes, as well as the ones it shared its forest home with at the time. Unlike other apes, however, our ape was a giant, potentially weighing in at over 200 kilograms. 
and measuring around an estimated three meters tall. Gigantopithecus was the kind of creature you would expect to encounter only in fables and folklore. Only four examples of mandible bones, along with thousands of potential tooth specimens, are known from this giant. So scientists cannot be entirely sure of the exact size of the ape. Regardless, these specimens did indeed belong to an ape, and a massive one at that. As it stands, Gigantopithecus was a creature that may have been around 40% heavier than the average male gorilla, the largest apes alive today. Gigantopithecus became known to science in 1935 when anthropologist Ralph von Koningswald was presented with a duo of molar teeth, which led him to describe the species Gigantopithecus blackie, the only definite species of the genus. Although another, Gigantopithecus belasperensis, has been proposed, which looks like it may instead belong to the Indian species Indopithecus giganteus. Potential specimens of Gigantopithecus have been unearthed subsequently from Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. But the ape is most closely associated with southern China, where it would have lived in warm, subtropical, evergreen broadleaf forests. Surprisingly enough, Gigantopithecus teeth were initially argued to belong to a member of the Hominini tribe, containing humans, chimpanzees, and gorillas. But recent studies have placed the animal more accurately within the subfamily Ponganae. In other words, Gigantopithecus's closest living relatives are the orangutans. And as such, many reconstructions of this magnificent animal betray it in a shaggy orange coat and broad cheek flanges, very similar to its contemporary relatives. In reality, Gigantopithecus's true appearance cannot be discerned without more fossil evidence. It was the lower jaw structure that led scientists to place this giant closer to orangutans than humans and chimpanzees. And although artists' reconstructions of the ape painted orangutan-esque in appearance, the general form of the body is often much more gorilla-like. This is likely due to the fact that scientists have automatically assumed that since gorillas are the largest living apes, Gigantopithecus must have held itself and walked in a similar manner. Such truths are yet to be discovered, and it may be that eventually we are able to discern with exact precision just what this ape looked like. One thing that we can be sure of is that Gigantopithecus was a herbivore. The fearsome appearance might lead some to assume a diet potentially weighted in favor of meat or an omnivorous palate. But studies on the teeth and jaws of this prehistoric giant put Gigantopithecus firmly alongside the vegetarians of the natural world. The jaws of the ape are deep and tough, and its teeth are low-crowned and thick in layers of enamel. Many of the teeth known to science also show extensive evidence of wear and tear, pointing to the fact that the ape was using them to grind tough plant matter rich in fiber. As to exactly what Gigantopithecus was eating in its warm forest home, we can look at the plant matter native to the region around the same time. Bamboo was in abundance in southern China towards the end of the Pleistocene, as were tubers and fruits. Figs, banyans, mulberries, 
and breadfruits were likely taken in huge quantities by these giant apes. And due to the fact that Gigantopithecus likely spent a lot of its time ambling around the forest floor, rather than swinging through the treetops, we can guess that large amounts of grasses may have also been eaten. Many of these plants require a tough set of teeth to process, due to their abrasive and fibrous exteriors, which is where this giant of the forest would have excelled. Gigantopithecus also seemed to have suffered as a result of its sweet tooth for fruit. 11% of molars unearthed from the ape seem to have been impacted by tooth cavities, and several specimens also show evidence of malformed enamel. Scientists attribute the latter condition, with potentially frequent food shortages, as enamel hypoplasia can be formed as a result of malnutrition while a creature is growing. Tooth loss is also known in these apes, specifically in a specimen known from Yanliang Cave in China but it doesn't seem to have impacted the individual too much, and it appears to have led a long life, despite the affliction. High levels of sexual dimorphism have also been suggested in Gigantopithecus, even more so than that seen in modern-day gorillas, with their famously gigantic, bulky silverback males. The existence of such a feature would have pointed to frequent competition taking place between rival males. But scientists don't believe that such confrontations would have led to deadly conflicts, due to the lack of protrudence and length in the canine teeth. Yes, it's true. Gigantopithecus one of the most awe-inspiring creatures prehistory has ever seen, coexisted with some of our early ancestors. Go back several thousand generations, and your relatives might have been sharing the ancient forests of Pleistocene China with a giant orangutan relative, bigger than the biggest of gorillas. It wasn't just a chance encounter either, Geochronologist Jack Rink from McMaster University in Ontario has used high-precision absolute dating to conclude that Gigantopithecus and Homo erectus, an archaic species of human that preceded us, Homo heidelbergensis, the Neanderthals and the Denisovans, lived in the warm evergreen forests of South Asia together for around a million years. Over the course of that time, Gigantopithecus would have become a familiar sight for our early Homo erectus ancestors. And without evidence, it is difficult to say how some of these interactions may have taken place. Although modern orangutan species have a typically gentle temperament, adult males have been known to become aggressive when threatened or frightened. Typically, however, adult orangutans are often observed interacting with tourists, traveling into their forest homes, and are more likely to shy away from danger in the treetops than to face it head-on. From this standpoint, perhaps Gigantopithecus individuals only posed a threat to humans when they felt cornered, or if early humans dared to attempt a Gigantopithecus hunt. That being said, Gigantopithecus was not a modern orangutan, nor did it really live too much like one. It is theorized that this ape spent much of its life on the ground, where it would have been forced into contact with humans much more than its modern counterparts. In such circumstances, perhaps conflict over territories or competition for fruit sources 
could have driven the two species into dangerous confrontations. Given the size of these apes, and knowing how dangerous modern apes can be when threatened, it's safe to say that when faced with a Gigantopithecus attack, a lone, unarmed Homo erectus wouldn't have stood a chance. As goes the case with many species of extinct Pleistocene megafauna, we can't completely rule out human interference when it comes to the vanishing of these great beasts. It's one of the running theories for this great ape's disappearance, in fact. But we'll discuss that in further detail later on in this video. As discussed throughout the video, in southern China throughout the millennia, Gigantopithecus ruled the roost in a subtropical forest, plentiful in greenery, specifically fruit-bearing plants, grasses, and bamboo. Remains of the giant ape have also been unearthed in Hainan, China, which, at the time, would have been a true tropical rainforest. But the animal generally favored habitats more akin to the former. The air of its forest home was hot and humid. Greenery was dense, and looking up, it would have been at oftentimes difficult to see the sky for the canopy. Amongst the bamboo would have grown birch and oak trees in large numbers and the forest floor would have been dressed in thick greens of herbs, ferns, bushes, and grasses. Southern China, towards the end of the Pleistocene, was indeed a naturalist's wonderland. It has potentially one of the most diverse and well-documented faunas of the Cenozoic, featuring a peculiar overlap of creatures now lost to extinction as well as a plethora of modern species. Of the creatures known and described from southern China's Pleistocene fauna, Gigantopithecus and Homo erectus are the most well known. But if we look a little further, we can see a near alien world of ecological wonder, a true living museum. Gomphotheres ancient relatives of modern-day elephants, such as Cynomastodon, wallowed in lakes and pools around the fringes of Gigantopithecus territory. Smaller than modern Asian elephants, with much shorter legs and a barrel-shaped body. Much larger was the Stegodontid, Stegodon, also related to the elephants with a much more recognizable form. Tapirs, wild pigs, rhinoceroses, muntjac deers, and guars made up the more recognizable stock of hooved mammals that would have gathered in large groups in the undergrowth. But several extinct, much stranger animals lived alongside them. Hesperotherium, would have been observed occasionally in the murky depths of the undergrowth, browsing from trees, or potentially eating shoots and fruits. This was a calicothere, a member of a bizarre group of mammals now lost entirely to extinction. They thrived through the Oligocene and Miocene epochs before steadily heading towards a slow extinction in the Pliocene and Pleistocene. Hesperotherium was one of the last of its kind, and in life would have looked nothing like any other single mammal alive today. Instead, it seemed to amalgamate elements of various mammal groups. Many calicotheres looked vaguely horse-like in the head and body, but possess limbs more akin to that of a gorilla or giant ground sloth. Many species walked on their knuckles and used long, curved claws to browse for vegetation. 
equipped with powerful arms to draw vegetation into their mouths. With its broad body, stout neck and short face, Hesperotherium would have been one of the largest herbivores of the region, alongside Gigantopithecus and the aforementioned elephant relatives. Among the carnivoran stock to live alongside Gigantopithecus were species of dole, or wild dog, packs of which still roam South and East Asia today. Bears are known from the region, including Elurapoda baconi, an extinct species of panda. Very little is known about this animal's lifestyle, but it could potentially be a direct ancestor of today's modern giant pandas. Whether or not they still ate meat, like most species of modern bear, or if they had in fact begun to switch to a purely vegetarian diet, is not known. One of the deadliest predators of the region was Megantorion, an increasingly familiar species of saber-toothed cat, mentioned more and more in news and popular paleomedia. Although it was less than two meters in length, it still wasn't a creature to be messed with. Unwary Homo erectus individuals potentially met their untimely ends at the hands of this feline, along with many species of small herbivore across the region. Like some modern big cats, Megantorion was very robust, not a speedy pursuit hunter, and would have instead been much more suited to ambushing its prey from the bushes and undergrowth of the forests. Even with the element of surprise on its side, it would have been very unlikely for Gigantopithecus to be on the menu. Gigantopithecus and Homo erectus were not the only primates to reside in these ancient subtropical forests, however. And alongside them lived macaques, various species of monkey, and even Gigantopithecus's relatives, the orangutans. Additionally, Meganthropus, a species of mysterious ape of a similar size to Gigantopithecus, was identified from the region by American paleoanthropologist Russell Shahan in 2009, based again from a few teeth. Closely related to Gigantopithecus, this ape's appearance and exact size have proved something of a conundrum to scientists. And it was even once thought to be closely related to Homo erectus due to its discovery close to a site rich in ancient tools. For the time being, Meganthropus has been uncertainly placed in the same subfamily as Gigantopithecus, Pongane, and all we can do to learn more is wait. As with many prehistoric animals, that became extinct before the advent of modern science. It is difficult for experts to pinpoint exactly how and when Gigantopithecus died out. The ape is estimated to have wandered the tropical Chinese forests until roughly 300,000 years ago, a tiny stone's throw on the grand scale of geological time we Homo sapiens actually appeared on the scene at roughly the same time as the last Gigantopithecus were dying, which was a period of drastic and harsh climate change. It is this climate change that scientists believe was the leading factor to the downfall of the largest ape ever to live. Hervey Boscherens a researcher at Tübingen University in Germany studied the disappearance of Gigantopithecus, concluding that climate change led to the subtropical forests that are ape relied upon for food 
to disappear. The woodlands and rainforests turn to savannas and grasslands, and many species of plant relied upon by Gigantopithecus, specifically the various species of fruits, became locally extinct in the South China region. An animal that big would have required huge amounts of food, and the sparse quantities of it suitable to eat in the dry grasslands would have put a lot of pressure on the species. As the food they relied upon disappeared, so did the apes. Of course, we can't rule out that ancient humans may have had something to do with the disappearance of Gigantopithecus, be it through direct hunting or conflict, or indirectly through competition. When Homo erectus moved into the area, it would have been likely that these early men and women exploited a wide range of food sources, and there would have undoubtedly been some crossover between the giant apes and our ancestors. Alternatively, perhaps the intelligent and weapon-bearing Homo erectus directly hunted the ape. Without sufficient evidence, we may not know for certain, but it certainly looks like climate change and loss of habitat and food seem to be the main culprits. Throughout the depths of prehistory, other species of extinct ape have existed that are related to Gigantopithecus. It wasn't the only spectacular primate to exist throughout the late Cenozoic era. A whole host of other Pongan apes, related to modern-day orangutans, shared the forest with our giant, across the course of the Miocene, Pliocene, and Pleistocene. The most widespread, well-known, and diverse of these genuses was Sivapithecus, which, although existed several million years before Gigantopithecus, in the Sawalik Hills of northern India, was one of the first apes of the Pongane subfamily to evolve. It's likely that one of the known species of Sivapithecus was the ancestor of modern-day orangutans, which shared the South China forests with Gigantopithecus and the aforementioned Meganthropus. Initially thought to be ancestors of humans, Sivapithecus was one and a half meters in length and would have looked something like a modern chimpanzee with the face of a modern orangutan. It's likely that it spent time both on the ground and in the trees and thrived in the open savanna grasslands across the northern and western regions of what is now India, chewing up seeds and grasses with its powerful teeth. Three species are recognized, Sivapithecus indicus, Sivapithecus sivalensis, and Sivapithecus parvata. Any one of them could have led to the diversification of Pongan apes into more recent times. Also persisting throughout the Miocene epoch was Indopithecus, another large ape from the Sawalik Hills. Indopithecus, which translates to English as Indian ape, was larger than Sivapithecus, and its story ties in closely to that of Gigantopithecus. Indopithecus giganteus was roughly half the size of Gigantopithecus, but was very closely related, to the point where scientists considered placing the species under the Gigantopithecus genus. Instead, it has been given its own genus for now, placed adjacent to its gigantic relative in the Siva Pithecini tribe. Taxonomy can often be a confusing and complicated area of study for scientists, and species and genuses are often reclassified and moved around when new findings arise from studies. 
traveling east, back to China, we encounter another late Miocene ape related to Gigantopithecus, Lufanpithecus. Thousands of tooth remains are known from this ape, as well as a handful of skull fragments. And from these, three species are known. Interestingly, certain researchers of the genus believe that Lufanpithecus could have been the ancestor of all African apes and hominids, meaning that if you were to go back far enough, your predecessors may have been swinging through the subtropical forests of southern China, cautiously scanning the ground below for crocodiles and saber-toothed cats. Coratpithecus is the last late Miocene Pongan ape to explore. This genus was known from the tropical forests of what is now Myanmar and Thailand in Southeast Asia, existing from 7 to 9 million years ago. Relatively little is known about these apes, but as usual, we know of them from multiple well-preserved tooth and jaw fragments. It is likely that this ape looked very similar to modern orangutans as it clambered through the trees of its humid forest home. Of course, Pongan apes are still alive today. We know of three species that have persisted through the Pleistocene megafauna extinctions to the present day. These are the Bornean orangutan native to the rainforests of Western Malaysia and Indonesia on the island of Borneo, the Sumatran orangutan, native to the northern sector of the Indonesian island of Sumatra, and the much more recently recognized Tapanuli orangutan, native to the tiny selected patches of the forest just south of its cousins on Sumatra, they are notoriously gentle apes, who all show examples of sexual dimorphism. The males dwarf the females with their bulky bodies, powerful arms, and large cheek flanges used for display purposes. All three species alive today are listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List, meaning that they are all at immediate risk of extinction. This is due to poaching, deforestation, and even the illegal pet trade. Several prominent conservation organizations and charities are fighting for orangutan survival, but each species continues to experience population declines. Two other species of orangutan the Vietnamese orangutan and the Chinese orangutan existed in the Pleistocene, but are now extinct, leaving behind their three contemporary relatives in the annals of prehistory. Search online for Gigantopithecus in any capacity, and it won't be long before you see the great ape referred to as the real-life King Kong, or something along those lines. The reality of a prehistoric giant living among the world of lost apes is hard not to compare to the infamous fictional gorilla from Skull Island. But some people have taken the myths and stories surrounding Gigantopithecus that one step further, and the creature has actually found itself synonymous with the cryptozoology myths of the various wild ape men that span the world. Undocumented creatures such as Yeti, Bigfoot, and Yowie. According to the cryptozoology community, small populations of Gigantopithecus may have survived the extinction of their species, holding out in small pockets in the Himalayas, forming the myths and legends. Many contemporary paleontologists, anthropologists, and other scientists do not support this theory, however, insisting that Gigantopithecus is unfortunately long gone, 
due to the lack of evidence for both yetis and gigantic extinct apes persisting to the modern day. Theories associating Gigantopithecus with these mythological beasts can be traced back to 1960, when zoologist Vladimir Chernesky described photos of alleged Yeti footprints from British mountaineers Eric Shipton and Michael Ward from deep within the Himalayan mountain range in the journal Nature. Chernesky likened the footprints to the scientific description of Gigantopithecus, attracting temporary attention from the scientific world. While the scientific community remained unimpressed in the long term, cryptozoology enthusiasts took to the wilds in a global search for these huge apes, which continues to this day. Anthropologist Grover Krantz was one of the few notable scientific names who encouraged the search for Bigfoot, insisting that the creature existed and spending much of his time researching the myths. Known for his studies on other fossil primate specimens, such as Ramapithecus and Homo erectus, Krantz's Bigfoot theories are held with suspicious regard in the modern scientific community. Krantz did suggest, however, that if Bigfoot were to be given a scientific name, it should be Gigantopithecus canadensis, giant ape of Canada. It's hard to imagine what it might be like if some of the Pleistocene megafauna were still roaming the Earth today. We're so close, yet so far, to so many species of them. You watching this video today only missed out on seeing a living, breathing Gigantopithecus by a few hundred thousand years. That might seem like a big leap, but as we touched on briefly before, it really is just the blink of an eye when you consider the 3.7 billion years that life existed on our planet. The next time you see an orangutan, however, be it a picture, or perhaps an individual in a zoo, have a think about Gigantopithecus. Imagine how spectacular it must have been for the first of our earliest ancestors in Asia to encounter a creature so bizarre, yet so familiar. Did they look into the eyes of the giant ape? and recognize the similarities between it and themselves. What must they have witnessed in those warm tropical forests that we will unfortunately never be able to? It truly is an amazing thought. We may never be able to see the largest ape ever to exist in modern times, but the diversity of primates in the modern age is something to behold. From the tiniest mouse lemur to the largest gorilla, we've all got something in common on a genetic scale. 